When you create a forecast, you probably don't look into a magical ball and the future values present themselves to you. However, what's more likely is that you sit together with some team members or with different departments and everybody gives their version of a forecast so that you then can sit together to agree on a final forecast. Now, it might be very insightful to show all of these different forecasts in a chart and compare them to the actuals. And maybe you also want to have the ability to hide all of the forecasts for those months for which you already have the actuals and show them whenever you want to. So basically a chart like this one over here. And that's what we are going to build together in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's start off by first having a quick look at the chart that we are going to build. Now here we have the actuals versus the forecast. The forecast is the pink line and the actuals that's the dark blue line. Now I want to have buttons that allow me to also add the forecasts from different departments. And I want to have a toggle button that allows me to hide those forecasts for those months for which I already have the actuals so that I just have an idea of where I will be at the end of the year. Now for this last feature, we need to combine the actuals with the remaining forecasted values. Now I have a video that explains into detail how to do this. Now for this example, I'm going to give you the short version as it's going to be our starting point. Now, here we have a chart where I show the actuals, that's the dark blue line, and then the forecast, that's the pink line. It's nicely connected. However, that pink line is basically a combination of the actuals and the forecast. So if I drag this one up a little bit, then you see it continues behind it. All right, now the important part is the measure. So let me open up the measure. And here you see that the first variable stores the last sales date. So I basically look at what is the very last sales date that I have in my data model. So that is the 30th of June here. Now where it gets interesting is the future forecast variable or the remaining forecast variable where we need a calculate function because we need to modify the filter context that comes from the visual, which is over here, the year, quarter and months. Now we want to calculate the ref forecast However, not over all of the dates, but only those dates that are after the last sales date. Now you see there is also a keep filters function and that one we need because we want to keep still the filters that come from the visual. Otherwise we would have the same dates everywhere and we would end up with the same future forecast for every single month. And then we have the result that should return the actuals for those dates that are before the last sales date and the remaining future forecast for those dates after. Okay, so let's take this now to the next level. First, I want to add this toggle that allows us to switch between showing the historical forecast and hiding it. Okay, now for this, we need a disconnected table. So let's go here to modeling and then new table. And let's call this one historical forecast. And this is going to be equal to, and here we can use a table constructor. So these curly brackets open, close, and then let's place them on a new line. And here we want to return either show or hide. Okay, so now we have here the historical forecast table, which is disconnected from any other table in my data model. And I'm going to use that value field on a slicer. Let's add a slicer and place that slicer above a visual, just like this. And then I take the value field, drag it on top of it. Now here we can either select show or hide. Now, of course, with the formatting, we can do better. So let's make it a little bit prettier. Let's go to general and put the orientation to horizontal. And then here for selection controls, turn single select on, slice adder we can turn off. And then here for the items, let's go to outline and put a frame around it and turn the title on. Now as a title, we can show here historical forecast and then put that one in the middle. All right, uh, let's make it a little bit smaller, just like this. So now we can either hide or show. However, of course, it's not connected to anything yet. So we have to go to a measure to connect it to that slicer. So let's go here to the ref actuals and future forecast measure. 
And here we have to go to our result variable because we want to have here an if statement because we want to check if the value of the historical forecast is selected. Now, here to check for that, we can either create a new measure or we can write over here if the selected value of the value column in the historical forecast table, if this one is equal to show, then we want to return the total ref forecast final. Okay. And otherwise, what we had before, the actuals and future forecast. And of course, we need to close the brackets for an if function. And now you see we do show the historical forecast. And if I click here on hide, now you see we are hiding it. However, I still need to change the order here on my visual. So let's put total ref actuals to the bottom so that you can see a bit better. So hide, show, hide, show. All right, so that part is working. Now the next thing that we need to do is to add the forecast from different departments. Now you might think, oh, that's pretty easy because here we could just go to the departments and put department onto the legend for this visual. Now let's see how far we get. So I go here to my visual, take them departments, take department, put it on the legend and it doesn't work. Now, why doesn't it work? Because we have over here on values, total ref actuals and ref actuals and future forecast. Okay, and if you have multiple values on values, then you cannot put anything on the legend. So I have to take out total ref actuals. All right, now I could go here to dim departments, take department and put it on the legend. And I still have one line instead of having different forecasts for the different departments. Now, the reason why is because I only took the final forecast. Now let's go over the scenario. I'm gonna go over here to the folder in which I have all of the forecasts. And here you see, we have one file for each department, sales, marketing, finance. We have their forecast for the revenues and the spend for the business for previous year and this year, okay? Now, there's also the final one as well. That is the forecast that everybody agreed on. Okay, now I imported those using Power Query, transformed the data a little bit and got it into this final format where you can see there's a department column. And here is basically the identifier that shows us where the data com came from, from which Excel file. Okay, so we have here final, finance, marketing, and sales. Now let's go back to our measure, the ref actuals and future forecast. And here you see that I took total ref forecast final only. So instead of taking the final one, I just take here the total ref forecast, which is basically just the sum of the forecast column. So all of the forecast summed up, which of course doesn't make sense if you leave it as a total, but it only makes sense if you filter it by the department. Now, if you go back to the visualization, you see we have one line for each department, marketing, finance, and sales, and we have a blank. Now, what is the blank? Blank is the final one, because if you have a look at our dim departments table, you see we have marketing, finance, and sales. There's no final department in my dim departments table. So basically the blank, that is the final forecast. Now you can see that the main functionality is there because we are showing the different forecasts for the different departments and we can show or hide the historical forecast. However, the actuals disappeared because we only have now marketing finance sales and the blank one, which is the final one. However, the actuals is not there anymore. And also not when I click here on show, you see the actuals is not there. So the actuals disappeared because we had to take it out from the value field. And also here, the final forecast shows up as blank, which is not so nice. So how can we fix this? Now, one option is to replicate a measure for each department. However, I don't like it because then you might end up with a lot of different measures. And every time there's a new forecast from a new department, you have to create a new measure. So I think that approach is not ideal, although it gives you a lot of flexibility. Another approach would be to add two rows to your dim departments table where you have in the department column, final and actuals. So that when you break down by department, it also shows actuals and the final forecast. Now you might say, hmm, I don't like it to add these two rows to my nice dim departments table. Well, as an alternative, you can also create a dummy table where you have the forecast source. So let's go for that approach. So let's go to modeling, 
and then create a new table. And this one is going to be my forecast source table. Now the first table values that we need will come from the dim departments table. So let's look for the department name. And we also want to have from the departments table, the sort ID, okay? Which will be also important later on. So let's take those two values. Let's see what this returns. And you see we have all of the departments, but also a blank value. So let's get rid of that one. So all no blank row as an alternative, you see, then we don't have this blank value. Okay, so now we have the first table with all of the departments. Let's go back to our formula and I'm just going to format this a little bit different. So I'm going to put this here, all right? And now we want to wrap this inside of a union function because we're going to take the union of this table that we just created. And now we have to add those two new rows. And we can do this by creating a table on the fly. So we can use the data table function. And here we first have to list the columns that we want to create. So for the first column, we can say, okay, this is going to be my forecast source. Okay, now this is going to be a string. And then we have the forecast source sort ID, okay, which is going to be an integer. Now then we have to provide the values. So let's open those curly brackets again and then put that on a new row. We first are going to have final and we also need a value for the sort ID. Now here I would just go very high. So let's say 98, we need to have the actuals and here 99, okay. Let's close the data table function and let's also close the union function. So now you see we have the two rows added for the final and the actuals. Now one thing still annoys me and that is that the column names are department and department sort ID and I actually want to have it the other way around. I want to have the forecast source and the forecast sort ID instead. So I just take over here the table that we constructed and put that one as the first one. All right, so I just switched them around. And now if I go back, now you see we have forecast source and forecast source ID. All right, so let's now go to data model and connect the forecast source to department. Okay, so that we have a relationship between the two. So let's now go to our visual and remove department from the legend. Now let's now take the forecast source from our forecast source table and put that one onto the legend. And now this already looks much better because you see, we don't have a blank. We have actuals, finals, finance, marketing, and sales. Now here, before a last sales transaction, you see all of these lines are overlapping. But the one that I actually would want to see is the actuals. However, the actuals is the first one, so it shows in the back. And you cannot just simply change the order here. We need to do that with a sort ID column. Now that's why before, I added here that forecast source sort ID, which is now really important because I want to have the final and the actuals at the end. Now to change the sorting here, you have to select the forecast source, go to sort by column, and then say forecast source sort ID. All right, now we go back to our visual. You see that the actuals is now here at the end and overlaps all of the other ones. And what happens if I switch to show, well, the actuals is gone again. All right, now it's an easy fix though. Let's go to our measure. Now here we need to add another if condition in case somebody wants to see the historical forecast. So in case this is true, we want to say if, and again, we need a selected value function and we want to check now the forecast source. Now, if the forecast source is equal to actuals, that means we want to show the actuals. Okay, so let's show the actuals. And otherwise, we want to show the total ref forecast. All right, now let's close that if function. The rest stays as it is. And let's see if it works now. So I go back to my visual and see that the actuals is now there. Now, of course, it looks a little bit messy because there are so many lines. So the first thing that we can do to make this a little bit better is to change the formatting. So let's go to format. And then we can go to data colors. And then here for marketing, I'm going to 
take the lighter ones, okay? So take the lighter colors so that they're less visible. And then for the final one, I leave that a little bit more visible, pink, and the actual ones, dark blue is fine. All right, then we can go to shapes. And then here, I put the stroke width to two. And then we go a little bit down to customize series. And then here for each series, we can format it a little bit differently. So for example, for the final one, we can go for a stroke width of three. Huh? So that's a bit more visible. And then for the actuals, you can also go for three. And maybe we we'll also want to have markers. Now, another thing that we could do is that for the, the different departments, let's say for marketing, we go for a dash line. And then also for finance, we also go for a dash line. And then also for the uh, sales, we go for the dash line. If you then still say it's way too busy, way too many lines, then we can add another slicer where you can choose which forecast should show. So let's add a slicer. And on this slicer, we're going to use the forecast source field. Let's add it to it. And here we can make the slicer a little bit prettier. So let's go to format again, then go to general, and we want to have horizontal orientation. And then we go to selection controls. Here we want to leave multi-select on, but maybe without the control key. Then I go and turn off the slicer header, go to items, and here I want to have the frame. Okay, now then let's also add a title. And the title over here is going to be uh, forecast source. And then we can put the title also in the middle. And then let's take that slicer and put it above our visualization. So now you can hold your control key, select the departments that you want, the lines that you want to show, and that's it. So here is our beautiful graph that lets us show or hide the historical forecast and lets us hide also the forecast that we don't want to show. And this is how you can handle multiple forecasts in one visual. Now, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, then consider subscribing. If you have any questions, just post them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.